Jim Wilkinson literally grew up within the Alaska Packers Association. He was raised at the APA Semiamu Cannery near Blaine, Washington, where his father and grandfather served as superintendents. Yes, indeed, it was a cartel. Uh, it was almost a monopoly. Uh, a, a number of canneries joined, to, uh, canners joined together uh, to control the market, uh, to control the fisheries, and they did fairly successfully. And they bought up most of the competition or put them out of business in one way or another. The company opened corporate offices in the city of San Francisco and purchased 25 acres of land with 3,700 feet of waterfront along the Oakland Estuary for creation of a shipyard. In its inaugural season, the APA caught, processed, and marketed 70% of the Alaska salmon pack. During the next six years, its share of average annual production rose to more than 80%. The trust busters may have been about to dissect Standard Oil, but trust builders ruled the North. Although the APA would operate substantial facilities on Puget Sound and in Southeast Alaska, its biggest enterprise was focused on the enormous red salmon fisheries of Bristol Bay. This was the remotest corner of American industry. Success in a region like this demanded a company with size, a company with capital, a company with manpower, a company with ships. The star of Alaska and Finland to lay in Bristol Bay till the summer. The APA had the size and the capital, and labor was cheap. All it lacked were ships. Immediately, the Packers began acquiring the hulls required to operate salmon canneries in a far off wilderness. A lot of them were what was popularly called a down easter or a, a full rig ship built in the post clipper era in New England. There were lots of them on the West Coast that were living out their lives out here in the lumber trade. But they were suitable for the cannery trade because they were boat carriers. And they could put lots of fishermen on board as transports. Around the world, ship owners were replacing their sailing ships with steam-powered vessels that carried cargo faster. Sailing ships could no longer be operated at a profit. But the Alaska Packers didn't need profits from the shipping trade, nor were they concerned with speed. Their business was salmon, and their product was non-perishable. They wanted floating storehouses, capable of carrying men and supplies north each spring, and of hauling the canned pack home to San Francisco in the fall. It was a buyer's market for sailing ships, and the Alaska Packers were buying. It seemed these venerable relics of an earlier age were ideal for the Alaska salmon trade. Well, in the first place, they were laid up probably six months out of the year. You didn't need a lot of engineers on a sailing ship. They spent their winter months laid up at the company's basin in Alameda, at Fortman Basin, at the foot of Peru Street in Alameda. And they, uh, uh, were just idle, empty ships for maybe six months out of the year. A steamer costs money to maintain. You got engines to maintain. On sailing ships, you don't. The original wooden down easters were hard workers, but sailing ships made from iron and steel were larger, more durable, and at the turn of the century, readily available on the world market. The association bought its first iron ship, the Euterpe, in January of 1901. Soon, there would be more. The Alaska Packers fleet was one of the largest sailing ship fleets in America, and probably the very largest that included the kind of ships they had, square rig ships. Uh, what they used to say, they had the biggest privately owned sailing fleet in the world, privately owned. 